Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to talk about some of my reading plans for the summer. So last year I made a like summer TBR thing that I didn't follow very closely, but I did read some of the books and sort of used it as a starting point for deciding on what kind of books I wanted to read over the summer and to be sort of a reminder of the things that was on my um, soon to get to, like my priority list basically. Uh, so I have a lot of books that I sort of, <clears throat> that I've mentally put to the side over the course of the year so far. They do not include a lot of new books that I bought because I'm going to be doing my uh, TBR update book slash book haul thing at the end of the month. Uh, so I'll show all of my mo most recent acquisitions in that video and pretty much all of those books are books that I would love to read in the near future. Um, but I have uh, selected two of them uh, for this uh, TBR. The other thing is that I'm not including any Invisible Cities uh, books because I've already spoken about a, a few of the books that I have my eye on for for each of the um, month's announcement videos that I always do. So I'll start with the two books that are actually new acquisitions to my TBR. So first we have uh, first we have Fifty Sounds by Polly Barton, and this came out I think in April, and I bought it immediately because first of all it's Fitzgerald Editions books, and I follow them. Very very closely because they've become quickly become one of my favorite publishers. Um, I love their design uh, style. I think they have a lot of they have a strong vision in the kind of books that they publish, and I really enjoy the things that I've read of them so far. Also, this is a book by a, a translator from Japanese into English, and so she's talking about. Uh, learning Japanese and specific Japanese words uh, in this book, like an essay collection centered around Japanese language. And uh, as mo many of you probably already know, I've been studying Japanese language on and off uh, for the last at least 10 years. Because of that, I have um, an immediate interest in this book specifically because of the subject matter and also it's Fitzgeraldo. So uh, this is very high on my priority to get to as soon as possible. I will probably get to this as soon as I finish um, In Memory of Memory, which is one of the books that I am currently reading. The other one I was sent by the publisher and that is The, In the Eternal Season, uh, Ghosts of Summer Past, Present and Future by Stephen Rutt and this was published by, this is published by Elliot and Thompson on the 1st of July. So I read <clears throat> Stephen Rutt's previous book, uh, Wintering. Uh, I loved it. I have talked about it several times before but basically it's a it's a combination of memoir, nature memoir things, uh, just sort of observing seasonal transitions and uh, the way that the landscape is changing, the way that the animal and wildlife is changing, uh, migration and all of those things. This book obviously centers around summer, so um, I am planning to start reading this one uh, in the beginning of next week, uh, in the upcoming days for July. I'm very excited about it because I loved uh, because I loved her, his previous book. I'm expecting to love this one as well. Both of those new editions are nonfiction books, as you could probably tell. And I have also selected three other nonfiction books from my shelves that I've had at least for a year. I think one of them is from the year before that, so 2019. And that one is Bright Earth, The Invention of Color by Philip Ball. And this is a book that I picked up after reading... What is it called? It's a chemistry nonfiction book. I will insert a photo of it here. Um, I read that in t early 2019 and one of the books that was referenced in that book was this one. Um, and it's talking about the chemistry behind the creation of colors, specifically painting materials. And I found that part in the other book that I mentioned that the title is escaping me at the moment. Um, I found that part really fascinating. It's one of those things that I'd never really considered uh, that the chemistry background and production of colors uh, is something that I definitely overlooked as an area and so I found that really interesting and I enjoy reading about color anyway um, and, and science things so it's just sort of a, a 
I think it's the overlap between art and, and science that I'm particularly drawn to. So uh, this one is, as I said, it's talking about, about color production, but also inevitably about art history. It's one of those books that I keep thinking I want to read as soon as possible and never actually do, so hopefully uh, this summer it will happen. And I feel like it's a perfect subject for summer reading, so there's that one. The other book is also art history related, and that is Edward Monk, uh, Behind the Screen by Sue Prudhoe. I got this one, I think, at the end of uh, 2020. Who was the man behind the screen? The iconic painting so acutely expresses the anguish of the 20th century. Uh, Edward Monk was 28 when he embarked on a lifelong effort to paint his soul's diary and began a perverse love affair with self-destruction. This intimate and moving life of the Norwegian artist explores his turbulent early years, his time as a recluse, and his intense efforts to paint not what he saw but what he experienced. Uh, I think uh, when I picked this up I thought that it might be the perfect timing with the pandemic and everything and sort of the mirroring of uh, what we're experiencing now with what was happening in the early 20th century. <clears throat> so that was sort of my might, I think, when I picked this one up. But uh, in general, I'm, I've am i been wanting to get into more art history related books. Last summer I read, or was it even the summer before, I read a biography about uh, Pius Kreyer who is also, or who was also a Scandinavian painter uh, of the turn of the century, and I found that really interesting to read. Uh, I think it's in general uh, biographies is always a good way to get a lot of context for uh, history and I think it will also be an interesting uh, portrait of the art scene of this time in Scandinavian in, in Europe I, I suppose. And then lastly for the nonfiction that I've selected here is A Half-Baked Idea by Olivia Potts. So again, a book that I got, I think, last summer, and this one is a combination of a grief memoir and a book about baking. When the book opens, she has just lost her mother, I think, and up to that point she had been a lawyer, but she decided to switch gears and to turn her passion uh, of, of baking into her occupation. So that is what this book follows. I'm really excited about this. I think I will enjoy it as that a classic um, crossover with memoir and occupation that I tend to really enjoy. So there's that. I have selected three novels and uh, one of them I actually started yesterday because I was so eager to get to it. It is an I novel uh, by Minae Mina Mizumura and this is translated by Juliet Winters Carpenter. This came out in March and I had been eagerly anticipating this one since last year. It is uh, the second book uh, published by Mine Muzumura, but it has only just come out in the English translation. Um, there are several reasons that I'm so excited to get this one. First of all, Ju Juliet Winters Carpenter is a fantastic Japanese translator into English. Um, second of all, I've read Minami Muzumura's The Fall of Language in the Age of English, which was a non-fiction book, but that was another fantastic book. And that was also tra translated by Juliet Winters Carpenter with another translator. And this book supposedly discusses some of the same themes of language in a fiction format. I read the translator's note and this book originally was um, used both in Japanese and, and English um, uh, and that it had been described as a bilingual book in, in Japan. So I'm finding that interesting to think about when I'm reading this English translation uh, because obviously for uh, an English reader, you would get all of all of the text will be in English. So the way that they, um, the way that uh, Julie Julia Winters Carpenter and Minae Mizumura decided to to uh, deal with that uh, bilingual nature of the book is to use different fonts um, to distinguish the the sections that are that were originally in English. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that I will, uh, I think that this will be an interesting reading experience on d several levels. Uh, but yeah, uh, as I said, I've already just started this and enjoying it so far. The next one is My Part of Her by Javad uh, Javahiri, Javahiri, translated uh, by Emma uh, Ramadan. 
and this is a Iranian author uh, who has moved to France um, and it's about uh, it's set in the summer which is why I thought it would be perfect for this season uh, in exile Iranian author Javad Javahiri's captivating English debut a youthful betrayal during a summer on the Caspian Sea has far-reaching consequences for a group of friends as their lives are irrevocably altered by the revolution uh, I figured it would be the perfect way to continue continue on with my Iranian literature reading after finishing uh, The Green Gage Tree. So, uh, the, and the alignment of The Green Gage Tree. The last of the novels that I've selected here is one of those books that, again, it's set, I think, in the summer. That's the reason I thought it would be appropriate. But also, I've been meaning to get to it for several years, actually. And that is The Remains of Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. And this is about a butler who has uh, lived in one house and worked in one house for, for several years or even decades and he decides to go on a vacation. So it says, the narrator of Kazuo Ishiguro's novel is quintessential English butler who has lived the heyday of country house society. It is 1956 and Stevens, after more than three decades of service at Darlington Hall, treats himself to a summer holiday. During a leisurely drive through the English countryside, he looks back over his career to reassure himself that he has achieved his professional ideal, to serve humanity by serving a great gentleman. Uh, and it, it's, it sounds like a very quiet type of book, which is exactly the sort of books that I am usually drawn to over the summer. Um, and I've been wanting to get to this one since uh, I read uh, Never Let Me Go, I think. Uh, is his other book that I didn't love um, and I've heard a lot of people say that um, many of his readers either like that one or this one uh, so I'm hoping that I, I will be one of those people who like this one over the other but yeah it just sounds like the kind of book that I could really love um, contemplative, uh, slow-paced, close character study type of book. Last up we have two books that are short story collections, so I figured it would be nice to have a few different types of book to choose from, uh, to choose from in this TBR. So we, we have Dark Tales by Shirley Jackson. I've read all but one of Shirley Jackson's novels and that is The Sundial, which I'm hoping to get to eventually. I want to get to The Sundial and might just get to that one instead of this one, but I figured I'm kind of in the mood for reading her short stories and I could even imagine rereading The Lottery and other stories, uh, but since I haven't read this one yet, I, I thought that I would prioritize it. Um, so yeah, uh, it collects, let's see, I think it's 13 maybe? Uh, 17. Uh, of her short stories and the last one is called The Summer People so probably it is appropriate for the summer. And then uh, the last one that I have selected here is Tovianso Novelle which is just the, the Swedish word for short stories. Um, and this one collects three of her short story collections so it is um, The Listener, uh, The Dollhouse and Other Stories and Letters from Clara. And other stories um, and I have read The Listener uh, so the other two short story collections I haven't read before. There's a mix mixture of emotions both a sort of melancholy and a, a sort of warmth in her writing that I particularly enjoy in the short stories um, and I don't know what it is but bo with both of these short story collections I'm um, I'm really drawn to them at the moment. Both Tove Jansson and Shirley Jackson are some of my favorite authors, so that is another reason I decided to pick them here, uh, because I want to make more of a priority to revisit authors that I've enjoyed in the past, to dive deeper into specific authors' bibliography and body of work. Um, that is something I will talk more about in my mid-year check-in with my goals. Um, Hopefully I will make a video like that uh, soon, in the next few weeks. Uh, but it's one of those things that I've had on my mind, so uh, that is the main reason I decided to go with both this and the previous book. I also just found out that there is a read-along coming up uh, that sounded perfect to me, and that is Juliana from the Blank Garden, together with a few other readers, are planning to do a Middlemarch read-along over the course of the summer. 
and from what I gather they are going to be reading 50 pages per week. Um, I will link the blog post where she talks about all of this and all the information below so you can find out more. Um, I've just uh, found out about it so I haven't looked closely into the information but just the idea of it sounded perfect to me because I read about a third of the book I think um, last year uh, because of Victober uh, and then I never got around to finishing it and never made any more progress with it this year. Perfect opportunity for me so that is another book that I'm adding to my summer reading plans um, and yeah so I will be joining in with that and as I said I will link the blog post if you are also interested in having um, in, in joining in with that read-along. So those are all of the books that I wanted to share with my summer reading plans uh, TBR of sorts. I would love to know if you've read any of these books or if you have any specific summer reading plans of your own. Uh, I would love to discuss it in the comments below. I hope you're having a fantastic week and day and I will talk to you soon.